Okay, in this video I'm going to discuss the classical PN junction. If you're looking for a rigorous discussion in terms of the, the quantum mechanics of our Fermi levels or anything like that, either ask me or do a course in solid state physics or even look up a, a rigorous physics book. So if you can imagine here, this, this kind of rectangle represents any sort of material you can have. Now there are types of materials called semiconductors and they have a conductance between that of a conductor and an insulator. And a good example of that is silicon. Now a semiconductor is of no real use to anybody in its own because it either doesn't conduct very well and it doesn't insulate very well. So what's done is a process of doping is carried out to your material. So if you can imagine once again that the rectangle is a material, a pure material, for example silicon, and what we do is we add impurities, we add other elements to your main material. So for example you might add a group 3 or a group 5 element on the periodic table to your silicon. And doing this is called doping. And the reason people do this is it changes the conducting properties of your material. So you're able to adjust it from being pretty much useless to something that is very useful. And I'll discuss how it's useful in a moment. So before we continue I'm going to talk about charge carriers. Uh, electrons are the carriers of negative charge. Okay. Now in semiconductors there is also uh, an entity called a hole or that is the carrier of positive charge so how to you know envis envisage a hole is quite difficult so I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to do that or explain that so if you can imagine here that this the black circle there is the nucleus of an atom and the blue ring is one of the orbits or uh, one of electrons orbits so if the atom has become ionized an electron has after leaving the atom it's after leaving uh, an absence of negative electric charge, which can be thought of as positive charge, or a hole. So that's the way I think about it. I think about it, a hole as an absence of negative electric charge rather than thinking of it as an actual particle or an entity in itself. So talk a bit more about doping. So when you dope an atom, in other words, or an at sorry, a material, you add impurities and those impurities can be as I said group 3 or group 5 in the periodic table so if one dopes uh, I think it's group 5 I can't remember but I'll be open to correction on this but if you grow, dope at group 5 you dope your material p-type or positive so when you dope it positive you create uh, you change we'll say the, the, the majority and minority carriers now when I say majority carriers if most of the conduction in a, in a material is done by negative charge then the negative charge carriers or electrons are the majority and vice versa for for the holes so in p-type the majority carriers are positive or holes and the negative are minority carriers for the n-type it's the quite opposite or the exact opposite where you have uh, negative charge is the majority carriers positive charge is the minority carriers so what you're saying basically is if you have an n-type semiconductor most of the uh, conduction is going to be done by electrons and if you have uh, p-type, most of the conduction is going to be done by holes. So, once again, I said that you can do this doping process, so why is it useful? Well, it's useful if you do the following. If you put two types of material together, a p and an n, and you make a junction, called a p-n junction. So if you can imagine that this diagram here represents a p-n junction, where we have positive charge on, we'll say, the left, and negative charge, or negative dope, on the, the right. Now, it's important to note that if it's p-type, Yes, the majority of carriers are positive, like the, these pluses, but there is, of course, negative charge, minority carriers in, in it. It's the same over here on the n-type, where the negative charge carrier is the majority, but of course there exists positive charge. Right? So you're not getting, you're not making, uh, you're not getting rid of charge, but you're rather changing who is who are, or what are the majority and minority carriers. So when puts when one puts two types of semiconductor doped like this together, they create a p-n junction, and immediately something happens. You have positive charge being attracted by the negative charge, and vice versa, negative charge being attracted by the positive charge. So there is a, there is a flow of charged carriers, or there is a current, and they will just move across the junction like that. They'll flow across the junction, and this will happen very quickly. And what will happen as a result of that is you can't really see it there. What will happen as a result of that is the electrons that which were here will have flown into the into the p-type, leaving an absence of electric charge or uh, a majority of positive charge. The positive charge which was here 
has flown into the in, in, into the n-type, leaving an absence of positive charge, or um, a majority electric charge. Sorry, negative charge. So you create what's called a depletion region. It's depleted of one of the types of charge. Furthermore, there is an electric field set up. The field will oppose the f uh, the further conduction of any um, of any charge carriers. Now this doesn't mean there is no conduction, it means the conduction has almost become negligible or has become negligible, but of course there still is some sort of conduction. So essentially what you can say is that immediately after making a PN junction, you have uh, the junction has settled into equilibrium and is no longer conducting. So that's of no, no use to anybody uh, until you do another thing called biasing, another process called biasing. So if you can imagine here, this is my PN junction where I have a depletion region negative, positive, and then my anti-p type. So, if one biases one's junction, you can do the following, by doing the following, uh, you will allow your junction to conduct. So, if you have a p and an anti-p like this, if you put a, a voltage source in series with it, you will affect the depletion region. So, positive, wrong, like charges repel, so if you have a positive and a positive, they will repel, and a negative and a negative, they will repel. And as a result, your depletion region will shrink in size. And it will shrink in size such that it will begin to conduct. So your PN junction will conduct again. The voltage required in order to shrink your PN junction for it to conduct is called your contact potential. It's usually 0 0.6 or 0 0.7 volts for an ordinary PN junction. Okay, so a forward bias PN junction will conduct. Now, a reverse bias PN junction, whereby you have positive and negative, positive and negative, will cause the, PN, the your depletion region to grow in size. And once again, it will not conduct, and it will continue to not conduct. So a reverse bias PN junction will not conduct. So why is this useful? Well, it's useful as, as a switch or a, um, to allow flow of charges in, in, in certain directions, and it's, you, it's very useful in in electronics. I'm not going to go into much detail about why it's used, but yeah, this is this is you know it's it's basically you can decide whether or not uh, charge will flow uh, down a certain direction by biasing your PN junction. And finally, I'll show you this the circuit diagram for a PN junction. A PN junction is also is is essentially a diode, and this is the circuit diagram for a diode, where you have the triangle and the vertical line. Uh, the positive charge is on your is, is with your your triangle or your cathode and your anode then is the is the vertical line. Uh, just to point out, if you see lines coming out of it like this, it's a light emitting diode or an LED. And if you see lines coming into the diode like this, it is a photodiode. And a photodiode will conduct only when light shines in it. And uh, an LED will shine light when it is conducting. And that is how a PN junction works.